All right, this is Isaiah Green, and this is the One Degree Podcast. Ooh. All right, third all right, time. All right, all right. Charm. Third time is a charm. All, all right, right. For sure. Is yeah, we good? All right, we're good. Welcome in One Degree Podcast off the field. Uh, three retired athletes talking about their adventures on the field, now off the field. We're sitting here off the field. I'm Tyson. That's Kenny, special guest, NFL football player Isaiah Green. Yes, Isaiah? Yeah. Welcome in. Appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all, man. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Kenny, what do you think about this guy right here? I love this guy. That's so you two, I, I really do love so this you guy. So you two got you two guys played together at Fresno State, yes. right? Yes. I don't I don't know what like how it kind of happened, but we just like clicked on some like weird level like usually offensive linemen and DBs don't really like <laughs> mix, right? Like we're the farthest away from each other on the football field. We got the biggest slowest yeah. white dude in the Fastest, smallest black guy. Yeah, right. And that's, and that's usually was, how it is, I, right? What is that? The smallest, kind of. I was kind of, <laughs> <laughs> but out. like you know, like I don't know what it was. Like we always just like kind of like mesh well together and like Facts. could conversate well together. Facts. And um, yeah, man, it was it was it was a lot of fun playing with him. And every time he would come into the into the box, I'd have to throw him out real quick. I mm. think that's kind of what it was, though. Is that how we got started? Maybe. So I, I like I of course I loved I wasn't that great at covering Kenny would probably let y'all know <laughs> that was the first thing you said Kenny, he goes, because dude, I want to get burnt all the time I'm, dude it's like uh what's that what's that movie Eight Mile how he had to like roast himself before everybody else does <laughs> so before before he does it I loved playing in the box right so when it, when I say in the box like I loved being in the mix with the big guys and we used to, and Coach Hill used to have us hitting day in. And day out, and uh, I remember like just playing, uh, playing in the box, playing that nickel position. We used to do like that half line run, and uh, man, me, I used to just run up to this dude Kenny all the time and just like, just bang his. All try, the time. try to. I right, bro, come on, give I me, mean, some, give me like. I mean, once I got my hands on you, it was done. I mean, I was, yeah, hundred and seventy as I'm supposed bro. to, as I'm supposed to. Anyway, I wasn't running away from the funk though. No, you weren't. You mm-hmm. weren't. I, I did respect that about you. I love that. But, I mean, <laughs> you're just a little guy. With a beak. <laughs> heart. Oh, you can say whatever you want. I can press the explicit Big button. Yeah. No, yeah, Bid man. heart. So, how many years did you guys play together? Three? Four? Four. All four years? Or? Well, yeah. I, well, I redshirted my first year, and then he came in, and mm. then you redshirted, right? Correct. So, it was, it was like we were on the field together for, like, out there playing three years. Yeah. And then, um, and then I left – and then he had one more year, and then we never really crossed paths in the league ever. Did you guys kind of hit it off? Was it was it love at first sight, or did you guys kind of hate each other at the beginning? And then you're like, oh man, this no, this big white dude's all right. I never I hated friends. Isaiah. No, never. it was never like that. Like I hated a lot of dudes on our team. Really? But, oh yeah, there was a, there was a few guys I just couldn't stand. Really? And just like <laughs> Isaiah was never one of them. None of the DBs really. Yeah. No, all the that was a good group. They were they were fun to be around. And like we all hung out together too. It wasn't like, um, uh, like how it is at some other places where only O linemen hang out with O linemen. Mm. Like my house, we had O linemen lived there, and then a running back lived there, and then we'd always have parties at my house in Listen. college. Sure. And and then like another house, it was like a DB, a D lineman, an O lineman, like where DJ lived. Correct. That, that was like the two party houses. Yep. So it was like we all mixed together, and we all, I mean. Isaiah could probably tell you some of the crazy stories about parties at my house in college. Isn't it funny that the guy who doesn't drink, that's never drank a sip of alcohol in his life, was was the one that had all the parties in college? That's not true. That's 100% true. Never. That's what everybody says, too. They always think I was partying and crazy, but I I never drank in my life. So you just set it up for the rest of us. Yeah. Wow. Well, my Nick Wright did. Yeah. I never knew that, bro. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. You learn something new every day. Not a, not even wine. Nope, never took a sip of alcohol in my life. Wow, well that explains all them cigarettes you smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Just heaters. <laughs> no, wow, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, no, I was I was thinking today. So it's Halloween today. Oh, I, dude! I think the last time oh. I got dressed for Halloween was probably at y'all party. I right? used to throw the craziest Halloween parties. Bro. No, no lie. The the best Halloween parties. No lie. Like we would look forward to it all year, and like, it was so much fun. And like, if it didn't get shut down in the first like two hours, it was like, it was a party. It was a party. It was bro. a party. We had people, because I lived 
on Herndon, right? On Herndon, but it was like a frontage road. So mm-hmm. I only had neighbors right next to me. I didn't have across the street neighbors. Mm-hmm. So like basically my street and then the then the brick wall and then Herndon. So it was like I didn't have that many neighbors, but we our cars were parked up up and down the streets. Like people dude just like it was crazy. You couldn't move in my house. Bro, it was crazy. It'd be so hot in there, just sweating. Everybody just dancing. This was when um, <laughs> who was who was hot at this time? Uh, T Pain. T Pain. Was Soldier Boy? Yes, Soldier Boy. Remember Soldier yeah, Boy? Yeah. We used to, <laughs> <laughs> we used to be in there, Superman and I know, like Shoot. this. Dude, crazy. I remember <laughs> it would be like. Everybody was like in there, like dancing and grinding on each other. Man, and then we turned the lights on the next morning or whatever. And everybody, you could see everybody's like butt mark on oh, the wall God. because like everyone's wearing jeans and like their jeans are just rubbing off on the wall. Like, dude, it was, it was crazy. It was we had like funny. a, we had like an extra roll of carpet that we would roll out over our carpet. Oh, wow. So like spill drinks or whatever, people stepping in gum. And, and so, and we just roll it back up and put it in the garage. So wow. You were a professional party throw slash hostess when yeah, you were man. in college and then you just played football on the side yep uh, i mean it was fun man it was fun it was a, it was it was <laughs> i forget what year it was where we like we lost a close game and like it was the day year didn't the day no the day before <laughs> halloween right <laughs> it was like the day before <laughs> halloween and everyone was like and like coach hill brought us all into the locker room we're like after the game after we got back home and everyone's just like, let's get the let's get out, out of here to go party right now, <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, dude. It was. Oh yes, the yeah, stories. It was, yes. It was, Coach it was Hill. Fun, man. I heard that Coach Hill hated when people would yawn during a meeting, so you guys would like hold it in. Oh yeah. You guys got like really good at holding in yawns because he would straight yep call you out, and then somebody yawned during a halftime like meeting uh, or something, uh, and straight made him get in street clothes and leave. Is that true? I don't, were, were I don't remember there? that. I don't know. I think it was before you guys. This was maybe but somebody was telling me they were like oh three. He would always be like, "Am I boring you?" To like whoever was like yawning in the middle of the meeting, which was like. But that's how Coach Hill ran his program for though. sure. Yeah, I for think sure. he got a little softer as years went on. Like my senior year, he kind of he kind of let up a little bit. But he, he knew the writing was on the wall. Yeah, so. he kind of let up a little bit. But he, that's how Coach Hill ran his program. Yeah. Like he made sure we were tight. You know what I mean? You remember those dang on special teams meetings we had to go into him backs, like we had to recite this whole special team pledge, and people we used to be so tight, bro. Like stress can't fuck up a word because if you mess it up, it's like you, you are starting. Nope. You're not playing. Like so, we had the special teams call like what was it, like five six hours before the game. Yeah, and so you had to go through the whole entire special teams depth chart. And if you're one or two deep on the on the position, like you had to sc- scream out your name. So Baxter would be up there with his like his call sheet and be like, "Left Gunner." And if Isaiah was starting a Left Gunner, he had to be like, "Green!" Like right. screaming out in the middle, like out loud. And then his backup had to be there. And if anybody messed up, Damn. it was like start over. You guys aren't locked in. It was then it was like you guys' fault. With that was yeah, I remember that, dude. So it was it was intense, bro. Yeah, it was, it was a in. it was a. NFL style like mm. mentality in our building, right? Yeah. Or in our in our facility. And that's one thing that I really like loved about Coach Hill is because he ran the program like an NFL program. Mm-hmm. And once we got to the NFL, cake. It was easy. Bro. Because because I mean the training camps were were tough, but we're used to it. Bro. A lot of these dudes that came from like Oregon or these these high profile colleges with like a spread offense and stuff like that. They were shitting their pants because they didn't know what to expect. And we walked in there and be like, oh, nine on seven, let's go. Let's like, go. Half from run, the let's NFL, go. right? Yeah. Did, did so, Pat Hill come from the yeah. NFL straight mm-hmm. to Fresno State? Did they no. hire him from the, Fresno, from the NFL or did he go somewhere else? No, him? he was with Belichick in like, uh, with the Browns, with the Browns right? a long yeah. time ago. And then he was with, I think, Arizona. And then he was an assistant at Fresno under, under Sweeney. Mm-hmm. And then he took over after Sweeney left. And then he left. Didn't he leave? No, after that, he's. He was, he, he was he at retired. Fresno for 15 years. But when bro. he retired, did he? When he left Fresno, did he go back to the league? Went yeah, to Atlanta. He went to Atlanta and was a long coach there yeah, for a couple years. Yeah, yeah. So it was. It was. I mean, I love that man. I like. I mean, he just got his name retired at the stadium, yep. which is awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. So it was. You get really, to see him a lot doing yeah. the doing the radio with him. Yeah, he's he's uh, definitely a good man, and he's like one of those one of those guys that's like. I don't know if you have the same feelings, but it's like he, he has 
his player's best interest in mind all, always, no matter Even if it, to this day. if it affects him negatively, he's going to put his players before him. Mm. Even and to that's this day. Yeah, even to this day. Exactly. Yeah. And like I said, on the radio this weekend, when everyone was, we we're talking about him retiring, I'm like, I owe that man like everything that I have today. Mm. Cause he was the first person to offer me a scholarship. He was the first person to like, believe in me, mm. give me a chance. And I came to Fresno state, met my wife, mm. played really good football. Now I have kids with my wife. So like all of that was because he believed in me. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's, it's pretty cool to like trace it back to like that point. Right. Like all the, everything I have now, the room that we're sitting in now is because of him. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of cool. I don't know if you feel the same way. Yeah. How do you feel? How yeah. Do you feel about man, you I know. I'm like, I, I know. Yeah. Like, I'm hey, no, like, but this is up, that's like, real. serious fun. No, that's like, real. This is, this is like life. No, that's you know? real. That's real. No, I appreciate that. Because, was, because you're not from uh, a Fresno, right? You're I'm from not, the LA area. Yeah. I'm so from, did, I'm so did, was coach Hill the one that offered you a scholarship? And yeah. Kind of brought you here also. Similarly, like coach Hill, I remember coach Hill coming to, uh, coming to, to my house man in Long Beach. I was at I was in Long Beach Poly at the time. I was at Long Beach Poly at the time and I had got a few like verbal offers before that. I had a few offers before that. But Coach Hill was the first person that came to my house and was like, Hey, I want you to come join us um here at Fresno State and I had got exposed to Fresno State a year before. My brother was, you know, being in the mix with, with Fresno, Oregon. Um, and so I was familiar with Fresno. And then, of course, they came down and played USC, right? I'm, I'm, I live in the backyard, USC, right in the backyard. So I was a Trojan fan. So I went and saw the damn game. And I'm like, man, who is, who is Fresno State? Like, I knew about them, but I didn't know they was really about it like this. And, uh, man, so when Coach Hill started recruiting me, I was a little familiar with them already. Uh, but Coach Hill was a he was a guy that was able to connect with mm. everybody. With everybody, it's crazy. It didn't matter you were white, offense, black, defense from from South Central LA or up in the Did boonies. Not didn't matter. Matter and it and I felt it was genuine. Yep, mm. I felt it was genuine. Right, like Coach Hill. I remember him coming into my crib one day, man, and of course you know my mom's there, my bros there, you know mom's fixing a little meal for us as we sit down and have a conversation, man. And this dude kicks his feet up. <laughs> oh my goddamn ottoman right there. And he's like, okay, we're eating. He's like, yeah, man, where's the hot sauce? And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Right? I'm like, who is this guy? I like him. <laughs> <laughs> right? And that's you know the kind I mean? of guys he attracted to. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we weren't we weren't anything like crazy special like when we were there because Boise was Boise, but um, that's the kind of guys and like the kind of like character guys that he attracted, sure. right? And I feel like we had such high character dudes on yeah. our team. Yeah, and they really, and to your point, like he really took the time to invest in us. Not, and he said it this weekend, you know, as he was getting honored, that he really took the time to invest in us in us as young men. Yep. Right, like. There was not a time to where I felt like I couldn't go and talk to Coach Hill about something outside of sports. Yep. There was not a time to where when Coach Hill would walk through the locker room, I remember him sitting us down and we're talking about relationships and women. You know what I mean? Like, Coach Hill was always available, but he was also a man that held you accountable too. Yep. Right? So, again, he ran a tight ship. He ran a program to where it's like, hey, you know, if you if – you, dicking off you know what i mean if you're around here doing x y and z like hey i understand it but that's not the ship that i'm running right like that's not the program i'm gonna have in place but it was done with a, a heart of accountability but also it was grace in that too right like hey i'm gonna sit you down because of x y and z but i'm not gonna disown you i'm not gonna kick you to the curb you know what i mean and he kind of left it in the player's hands to do that too absolutely because we kind of like we knew what he expected, right? And if you were on that same track as us, we got you out of there. Yeah. Like, we made your life you got, hell. You, got, you guys pleased yourself. Oh, yeah. We because of our, him. Because, because of, of him. And we knew, had. right? We knew. And, like, it was kind of learned through that time, right? Like, the older guys, when I was there, um, they taught me how to do it. And then when a guy was not doing his part or doing, doing the, like, Coach Hill way or whatever you want to say, we got his ass out of there. Mm -hmm. Like, we made their lives live in hell, mm -hmm. right? Because – all the everybody's got to roll the same way for the for the ship to go yeah, right. Yeah, because you yeah. knew that if they were acting a certain way in the locker room, or you couldn't trust them in the locker room or outside, you're not gonna be able to trust them on the field, exactly. right? Because you guys yeah. are out there, you, everybody has to be on the same page. 
everybody has to, you know, have one another's back, right? And and if everybody's on the same page and is going towards towards one goal, then the team is going to have more success than a bunch of super talented people that are just out there for their own. For, for sure, their own. yeah, absolutely, no doubt. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's it's it's. I think teams are closer when when they're policed by themselves. Like a lot of the teams that like I were I was that were really good on when I was like in the NFL. This rave, the Ravens team and the 49ers team, we were all policed by themselves. Yeah. Right. So like that was like one of the one of the common denominators that I saw with the really good teams were the the leadership within the teams and held holding each player accountable from the players, not just the coaches. Right. Yeah. And that's a, a prime example of co- what Coach Hill did. Yeah. Right? Did that he, and did that come from the top with the Ravens too, with the with the head coach and all that stuff? For sure. Yeah. Same thing. Same kind of thing. Right. And and it helps when you have guys like Ed Reed and Ray Lewis and Terrell Suggs. That's like, your favorite th- guy. That's just like running the team, right? And we had dudes on the on the 49ers that were crazy good leaders. And those too. guys had the respect of respect, of, you know, right? of rookies because they've Correct. been there, done that. So whenever Ray Lewis says something, you're gonna listen. Yep. Right, so when you have guys like that, it makes it a little bit easier to know what you're stepping into as a rookie. You got to play with Ray. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I was getting ready to say though, like on top of that, the coaches, good coaches create good culture. No doubt. You know what I mean? Like I think about Mike Tomlin. I think about Pat Hill. Like when you're talking about teams and players policing and just kind of falling in line to the culture and the systems that have already been built like they did a good job the coaches did a really good job at creating the culture that they want to see that their players you know that the players will follow yep. right um and so yeah i think about some of those coaches i.e tom is probably one of the best coaches that i've i've been able to learn and sit up underneath and, and along with pat hill like um just great like all time just greats you know what i mean Oh, yeah. that's dope. There's 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 few coaches that can that can get like that out of players. Yeah. Right? There's sure. very few coaches that can get that out of players. For sure. One is like you have to earn the rep- the the player's respect. And that doesn't come from winning or losing. That re- that comes from like how you treat the players, right? For sure. And like you can have never played a down of football in your life and 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 earn respect from players. But like there's there's some coaches that come off as I know my way to the my way or the highway and this is how it's going to be Bruce Arians Bruce Arian okay I mean Bruce Arian yeah kind of that kind of way right I mean great coach I liked him I had him in X's and O's in one thing or one or one thing right and then there's then then there's creating the relationship Mike Tomlin right so exactly Mike Tomlin my first day on the job I'm just I just left BA and again BA was good I think B.A. was good at what he did. I think B.A. was a good coach. I think uh, I had him at Indy. He went over with the Bucks. He was head coaching for the Bucks for a little while, and I think he's up in the front office with the Buccaneers currently. But I had him in Indy, so I transferred when I got released. I went over to um, – I got uh, picked up by Pittsburgh. First day on the job, bro. No lie. First day on the job. I get to Pittsburgh. I sign my contract. I sit down with Tomlin. He hands me a pair of tickets – to a Wiz Khalifa concert the first day there my first day on the job he hands me some two two tickets I don't even know anybody in uh, Pittsburgh other than Chris Carter he was there yeah. um, and I'm like I took the tickets and I'm like bro is this a setup <laughs> it's a trick is this, <laughs> a, <laughs> test me to see if is this a trick he's like man I got these tickets I'm not gonna be able to go man here you go I sure as hell went to that concert you know what I mean for a little bit but Again, when you talk about, and I have many stories with Mike just being a player's coach, similarly like we talked about Pat, but someone who cared about the person yep. outside of the player, right? Not just the player, but the person. Mike was that guy. Mike yeah. was that guy. See, I've, I've, I've had coaches like um, John Harbaugh was like that. Okay. In, in Baltimore. He cared about the players and all that kind of stuff. And then you get to a point where it's like, like a coach like Belichick, right? Where it's he's just like top pedigree, right? He he is the 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 probably the goat. He he won all the Super Bowls, all that kind of stuff. No, I don't know about that, Tom Brady. But, but I'm just saying, I like you, he 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 has that like stigma of like for sure. But Belichick's the Patriot way, right? Like whatever happens, Absolutely. plug these guys in, and then and it'll work. And it gets to the point where these coaches that are under him go off and mm-hmm. do different things, mm-hmm. and 
try to do this, implement the same kind of thing, but they don't have the respect of the entire team. Like mm. Bill already has. When you walk in, you, you respect Bill. That's Bill, right? You that that's that's what you do. That's when you walk into New England. Bill is the head coach. He's the GM. Mm. So you walk in there, and he is end all be all. Yep. But now, the, somebody else underneath him comes into a spot and tries to do the same thing. You no. can't do that. And then you rub a lot of people the wrong way. Because yep. they're trying to be like Bill Belichick, they're be like Bill not Bill, Bill Belichick. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I had two coaches that were un- from from under Bill. And I loved I, I love Patricia. I really do. I really think he's a really good coach. But he just didn't get the respect of mm. a lot of the guys. So it's like it was hard for, for him to win there. If you'd have walked in there and won a bunch of games – then they would respect absolutely. It. But you go, you go three and six in the first nine games, and you're like, uh, "This isn't working. I'm, I'm working my ass off for for three wins. This ain't right." Like, yeah, because is, you would say that 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 he ran a pretty tough program. It was, it was tough hard. for sure. It where was, was definitely it, where hard. were you at? Detroit in Detroit. Okay. Yeah, so with 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 all those guys, and then I went to New York with Joe Judge, and it was literally just like I left Detroit and I went, went into the New York meeting room. Same exact thing. Really, it was cookie cutter, bro. So I'm like, Were they, are they trying to be like Bill Belichick? One hundred percent. And they just don't. It's, it's, and, then, and it's it's, it's hard, not authentic. Bro. It's not. Yeah, does it, does it kind of come them. off a little fake? Like you guys can see, like they're trying to be like Bill. But, uh, but they're see, not. I was never with Bill, so I don't know. Like, it, like, and a lot of those guys weren't, you know. So in. And Patricia would lo- would try to bring in a lot of New England guys to kind of like create that culture, nah. which like the guys that were really that were already in Detroit. Like that were like the high paid guys, and just were just like, uh, I don't know about this, yeah. you know. Like, it's not really working. So why am I like, I'm not happy here. I'm not. We're not winning. This it sucks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get out of here. And then Patricia was just like sending them off. Yeah. Like, see ya. See ya. See ya. But I think it goes back to my point, right? Like creating culture. No doubt. You know, as you come in, as that coach comes in, like he has to be authentic and true to the culture that he's trying to create. And again, he did create one that did not work for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And or any other. And that was what that he team. thought was the culture that he wanted to bring. But that was Bills. No, you know what I mean? Yep. To your point, right? And so I respect head coaches in a sense of the the job is really to create an environment where your players, your coaches can thrive with what you have, right? Like that is a that is something that I'm learning about anybody in leadership positions, whether it be CEOs, you know what I mean, whether it be head coaches on any sort of level, it's a it's a you have to really curate the culture for folks to come in, feel welcome, feel belonged, feel like they can be their best cuz I remember walking into uh, Pittsburgh, and I'm like, man, I can be, I can be who I want to be here. Yeah, you know, there's no restraints in this space, right? I can be the little scrappy dog that I want to be, because that's the culture. You know what I mean? That was created. It's like I had the room and the space to be able to become who I wanted to be. So that was that. I, that's a testament to to leadership. And the thing is, too, with Tomlin, though, like. The, the, like Tomlin and Pete Carroll, I I I think they yeah, were, Pete like, got the juice with the with the with the with the culture kind of thing too, right? But they do a good job of letting Pete players be who they are within the confines of the culture. Of course, right? So it's like you can do what you want to do, but when you step out of line a little bit, we got we're gonna have problems. Going back to what we said about Pat, yep. same thing, no doubt. Here's the culture, no doubt. But I'm still gonna hold you accountable. Yep. I remember, I remember, shoot. I saw this is we were towards the end of the season. I think I think we went eight and eight that year. Didn't get into the playoffs. Still had a you know over. Uh, we still had a you know a winning season per se. But um, I remember seeing guys, veterans, at the, like in practice sitting on their helmets, and I remember thinking like, wait, growing up. That's a yep. that's a absolute Don't take no, your helmet no. off in practice. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But again, it 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 reflected the the liberty that players had to kind of just not not just be willy nilly and just kind of do what they want because there was still a structure there, but it wasn't as tight as yep. any other place that I've ever been, which again gave the freedom to be. You know what I mean? A man and to be in a space where, hey, here's an opportunity for you to grow because there's freedom here. Right. Um, but go back to this Ray Lewis thing, bro. That's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. 
You, Dude, you I played with, with I, multiple. I on play with them. Yeah, I like some who, crazy dudes, bro. Who are some of the Who are some of the top? I mean, you play. You said you got cut thirty times. I played with Randy Moss. You play with You play with Randy. Your friend. That jersey right there. Yeah. I play with I play with Randy. I play with Randy. I play with Suggs. I play with Ed Reed. Play with Ricky Williams. You play with Ricky. He was in Baltimore with me. Yeah. Y'all used to get high together. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, dude no. never took a sip of alcohol, man. <laughs> See, he lives the smoker up, there. He is. He yeah. lives up in um, Grass Valley, where <clears throat> where Jackson's from. Andrew Jackson from. Oh, for real? Yeah. So like, That's yeah. Hard. So we kind of like connected on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, How was Ricky? Quiet, quiet, quiet. Like yeah. just kept to himself. Yeah. And that was like year ten. You yeah. Know? So like he was. Ray Rice was on that team. Yeah, that was a good team, man. You got Philip. You think you got Philip Hall of Famer to that list? I think Philip's gonna be Hall. Philip Rivers. Yeah, Gates. Gates is the man, bro. Oh yeah. Hey, tell him how uh, Philip used to talk trash to the other team oh, and dude. made a guy he made a apologize. guy apologize to Gates in the middle of game. <laughs> dude, hilarious. Dude, grown man. dude, Phil was the Phil was the best. Really, Phil was the best. Dude. Really, like talk about like a guy who just didn't like want to let down. You yeah. know, like he was the guy who was like. He was doing everything he possibly could, like talent wise. He wasn't that talented. He wasn't okay. talented at all. Yeah, we. I think Stafford we was like one hundred percent. Okay. Ten times more. Yeah. Talented than he was. Yeah. But Phil just cared so much, and it was like a coach out there, like. That's dope. And I, I mean, I have a soft spot for Phil because he always had my back too. That's dope. After getting cut thirty times, but. Sheesh. But uh, yeah, he was. Talk about he was. That. He was the best, bro. So you got. So you got who, who else? Who else? Chargers, uh, New York. Any 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 Hall of Famers in New York? I mean Saquon. Okay. Saquon will yeah. be. Will you play with him? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was there twenty one and twenty. Okay. So recently, whoever's on the team now, I was with. Got it. Basically. Okay. I remember you saying that uh, when they tried to put you on the practice squad, he was the one that was super pissed about it. Yeah, he was no, the one right there. Yeah, when I got when I got cut, like so, I they put me on the practice squad, and then I was pissed. Because I started the entire preseason and right. had the most reps out of anybody on the team in year, right. year 11. Right. And he was like, I, they called me up. They're like, we could tell you're upset. We don't want that attitude around here. We're going to let you go. And I'm like, right. fuck Literally. off. I'm out of here. Uh, I walked out and like Saquon was like walking in the building. He was like, I was, he's like, what are you doing here? I was like, they just cut me. I'm out of here. He's like, no way. And I was like, I was like, yeah, bro. He's like, that's fuck, that's bullshit, dude. You worked your ass. I'm like, yeah, whatever, bro. It is what it it's is. It's the game. It's the that's, business. That's number fifteen. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I, it is what it is. Yep. How was but, that though, man? I feel like, I mean, you play professional sports too. I don't know your journey when it came to professional sports and maybe being. I mean, being fired now is so much easier than it was. Actually, it's so much. I've never been fired since <laughs> the league. <laughs> by the way. But you there's a every week or yeah something? no in the league <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah, no doubt. but it was so like the dynamics between the workforce now and you know playing in the league are so different right like I had a meeting the other day with my supervisor and there are a lot of changes that are going you know happening within our organization and you know he was you know telling me this. Just kind of giving me this like drawn out, hey, this is what we're gonna do, and X, Y, and Z, and he's like, "Is there anything left?" And I'm like, "No, like, are we done?" You know what I mean, <laughs> right? Like, just because in the league, and you know this, and of course, I'm sure I don't know if 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 you've been ever released or let go from a team, um, but it's like, hey, thank you for your time, you know, X, Y, and Z, appreciate it, have a good day. Like, there's no. Yeah. There's no soft landing this, right? Like, we understand the business. We understand what comes along with it. Hey, thank you. We appreciate it. You know, best of luck, and we keep it moving. There was – I always hated the – like, them trying to, like, beat around the bush and, okay. say, and, and say, like – because because a, a lot of the times I got released, they, they were like, you did everything right. 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 You did everything right. Um, you're a guy that we like, love to ha- have around the locker room. There's just not a spot for you. Right. I was like, don't tell me that shit. Just, t- just tell me I'm gone. Like, tell yeah. me, tell me I suck. You know, like, tell me I'm not good enough. Like, cause that's what it, that's really what it is. Um, but yeah, man, that was the worst part where it's like, you did, there's nothing else you could have done. And I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like fuck off again. You know, like, but Man, those day, those days are some of the worst days of my life. Yeah, like, no doubt, no no doubt. Like sitting there, like 
looking at your phone every 30 seconds, waiting for the phone call to come like, and not knowing like you're probably around anywhere from 50 to 57 on the roster right now. So like, and there's 53 that make it. So like you're anywhere from that, like, like you're doing the numbers in your head and you're like, if they keep eight offense linemen, then I'm good. If they keep, if they keep nine, I'm for sure good. If they keep seven, Oh, I don't know. Like, and dude, it's, it's literally the worst 24 hours of your life. Like it's, you play a game, and then it's like this is right, preseason. Preseason. This is preseason. This is talking preseason. Preseason. The, talking preseason. Because I feel like getting cut in the middle of the regular season is easier than preseason. Okay. Because it's it, like, it, it it is. Because you don't really see it coming. It sucks. It doesn't. But it's it's, there's no build up to it. Yes. You know, correct. like you you literally correct. walk into the you literally walk into the building and they're like, uh, "Coach wants to see you." And yeah. You're like, oh fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's just how it goes during the season. But like during preseason, you get that phone call from that area code that you know is San Diego or whatever it is. You're just like, damn, Damn. like, all right, I got to go. And then, then everybody else is getting cut. People are freaking out and people are crying and shit. Like, man, dude, it's, it's crazy, dude. It is rough. Have you, have you had to? Yeah. Twice. Okay. Well, yeah. One, uh, when I was in Mexico, they wanted me to loan me to another team, which is like pretty much the same thing. And they, and they knew that I wouldn't go, but that was, that was last year at the end of my career and I was kind of already, you know, thinking about doing it. You know, I had kids and now I was starting to miss them and I was kind of, you know, somewhat being selfish that I wanted my kids to be able to watch me play. You know, I wanted to have them on the field, take them into the locker room. So once that happened, you know, I was okay with it. I had already been preparing for my future. I had already okay. been doing that. I kind of got a bonus two more years. So I was thankful for that. Um, but football and baseball are so different. Kenny and I talk about this all the time to where you can be a dude in the NFL for two years in a row and not have a job the next year. Yeah. Like it's tough or, you know, or, or, or you get injured and you miss a couple of years. And then now that team that you're going to sign with that next year doesn't trust that you're healthy again, especially, you know, at the, at the defensive position, offensive line, um, you know, running back, what's a running back's career two three years mm-hmm. like you know saquon's had to deal with trying to get paid he's one of the best players in the league right. but he plays a position that not very many guys stick around at a super high level and so the two sports are very different in that aspect to where you can play baseball for 15 years outside of pitching pitching's different right like we play as long as our arm allows us to play you know, especially like football, you guys can play as long as you can. You know, quarterback's going to play 15 to 20 years. Right. And at, at, as long as he plays at a decent level, you're going to you're going to find a spot at, at a quarterback. Every other position, it's it's tough. And 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 like the turnarounds just keep going and going. New guys in, new guys out. And we're talking about this a lot with uh, college football, how college football has changed. You got college athletes getting paid now. Absolutely. So what's it going to be like when these college athletes that are getting paid making two, three million dollars in college when they when they come to the league now? Is it going to change the entire culture of the NFL? I don't know. Maybe that's something that that you can kind of talk about with how college football has changed with the uh, what's it NIL? Yeah, you know, they're getting paid and stuff. I, so I don't know. I don't know too much about the NIL I'm still learning and doing some research on it because I do think that when you have the ability to get paid or should I say when you have the ability to um, when you have the ability to get paid early I mean, I, and, and I, I kind of hesitated a little bit because folks was getting paid before the yeah, NIL. Yeah, it was the same. You know what I mean? Like to legally get paid um, give Reggie Bush his Heisman back. Yes. Um, like when when you think about it, I also wonder the same thing. Is that, when I say that, is it going to change the culture when you have young men and or women being able to make millions of dollars prior to going to the highest level that you can potentially play at, i.e. the NFL, right? I'm, the, the conversations I've had around it is, I think it will. How? I mean, I think that's up for discussion. I think it's new for a lot of a lot of us in this space. And so we're really trying to figure out how and what that looks like. But I know the hunger is a little different for us. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you had to be a one percenter to go to the league. Right. Like you weren't thinking about making millions unless you were a one percenter. And 
that's the, you know, you have to be a guy to get over that hump. Like there's a lot of folks and I don't know the numbers to this, but there's a lot of folks that go into college when I'm, and I'm just specifically talking about college football. Now there's a lot of men that go play college football, right? Hats off to everybody. Kudos. But then there's a very, very small few of 1% of that X amount mm -hmm. that go play in the NFL. Right. And then, of course, the numbers start decreasing as, you know, you're talking about getting over that three year hump to get the pension, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But our drive was like, hey, you know, I want to be able to provide for my family. I want to be able to go play at the highest level. I want to be able to do X, Y and Z. And I have to be a one percenter. So I, I know that I'm not going I'm only going to have the opportunity to make that money if I can get over this hump. Right. And it's a very small percent. Now, just the pool is just wide open now. Yep. I had a conversation with my 12 year old nephew. He's like, man, if I'm asking him, what would he do with a hundred thousand mm dollars? -hmm. Right. Just he's 12. Right. <laughs> What'd you do a hundred thousand dollars? He gives me his answer. Right. It's a 12 year old answer. I want to take care of X, Y, and Z, my family, my mom. Cool. Cool. But then he goes, you know, but if he does it, so if Alabama wants to pay me a hundred thousand dollars to go to school there, um, and, and this was before Prime got to Colorado, and he goes, "Well, if Colorado wants to pay me about 1.2, like, I'll go to Colorado." But it just blew me away that he's already thinking and understanding that he has the ability to make this much right. money. All I'm, at 12 years old, all just by getting into college, are the window now of 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 the say college football athlete or the football athlete. The window to make money is just getting bigger. It's wider, hundred you know percent. I mean? So that's that's the only really thing that's like crazy, because because everybody has a number in their head. Most people are like, I want to make this. I want this amount of money in the bank before I retire, right? So that might happen a lot sooner for some people, for sure. So it's like, I know what, a couple of dudes that I play with are like, I want twenty million in the bank and then I'm chilling. Like, okay, like that's fine. They get their big signing bonus. They hang that shit up, which is not bad. Which is which is that's what the, that's thing. their choice, right? That is uh, their choice. Absolutely. Like, would it would I have that in my my body? Probably not. Right. You know what I mean? But like, now that that whoever that whatever that number is for that person, if they're if they're already at ten million dollars before they even step into the league, do they, they even play? They don't even, they even got to they don't even have to get to that far. I mean, I think they do. I think I think we I think we play this game because we love it. We do to a, to a point though, like there was, I guarantee there was a point or, I mean, no offense, but I don't know if you got there, but mm -hmm. like where the, the game kind of lost its luster because of the money. Important. I remember Les Brown saying, people say that money's not important, but it's right up there with oxygen. Right. You know what I mean? Like you <laughs> need real. it to survive yeah. in the world in that we space. lived in. Now, Absolutely. if we were in like a hunter gatherer where we traded for goods and stuff like that money's not going to do Nothing. anything you can have passion you can make your little woodworking stuff and like be happy but the 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 world that we live in is just like the nfl it's just like professional baseball it's dog eat dog mm -hmm. if you don't perform on the field you're not going to play you're not going to get paid so if you're doing something and you have a passion and that passion makes you money then then you're living Absolutely. right like it's it's like perfect yep. but but don't lie and say that you're not doing it for the money. Like, just be honest. And once you're honest, you'll be able to make more. You'll be able to do a better job at whatever job that you're doing. That's Absolutely. like that's like saying like, okay, I played in the NFL for 11 years. Uh, I I still love playing football. But then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go play semi pro and or arena league and it, to make to make 30. Bucks. Yeah, 300. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna do. I do not love it that much. You know what I mean? Like, that's the that's the like. Or even go to Canada, like as we know you went there, which yeah. what's a different what's a different like but I'm not gonna play in the, the league for eleven years and then go back down to Canada, make sixty five K yeah to to play football and I'm like I'm not doing that. Yeah, especially you know, like especially year left. I mean, after you've done it for so exactly. long. Exactly. And that's yeah. and that's kind of what I'm saying. Like you there's always a turning point in like a an athlete's like mind where it's like, Okay, these twenty one year old kids are whooping my ass. And I was never the biggest or strongest or fastest in the first place. So if I lose one step, I am way behind now. Yeah. And that was kind of where I was at, but I was, I was so such a veteran though. And I, I knew how to work my body and, and knew all the little tricks and intricacies of all the, of all the offensive line play that I could survive out there. Right. So like, and I, I made it look decent enough where I'm not like this freak athlete. I can, 
the game was a lot slower for me in year 11 than it was for a first year guy. You know what it was for me, man. So I went up to Canada. I went up to Canada and um, the season is different. So it's like six months on, six months off. Like they don't have the amount of resources the NFL has by any any shot, right? Um, and so I remember after my first season in Toronto, I had got let go in Pittsburgh in 2014. I had spent some time out the league for a little while just playing ball. Like just – it was wild. It was like, damn, I was depressed and didn't even know it, right? Like, I just get cut, and I'm, like, just at home, not knowing what to do. I get a call from Canada, Toronto. I get picked up. We go through that season, and after the season, you have so much time off. So much time off until the next season picks up. And it's not like the league, right? Like, I think we got done in December. I think I was back at it, like, in February. Yep. You know what I mean? February, back in Pittsburgh in March, you right? Yep. Like, just making sure we're, we're back at it. With this, with the with the Canadian League, it's just a totally different structure, totally, totally different calendar. I remember spending my first Thanksgiving with my family. This was after, I think this is my fourth year playing professional football. And you know this, yep. and you know this, and I, I don't know if you know this due to you all season, but you know the grind, how much time you spend, get you know, giving to your craft and away from those you love, like the ones you play with become your family, yep. right? And I remember spending my first Thanksgiving in I don't know how many years with my family. And I was down in Pasadena with my, at my auntie's crib, and we were all at the house cutting turkey. And I remember thinking like, damn, this is weird. I miss this. Mm. Like this is. Oh yeah. It's weird, but it's like, it's it's been so long, and I remember that being like the turning point for me. Gotcha. Like, oh, there's a civilian life outside of sports that we aren't accustomed to. Yep. And with the with the calendar year, um, with the year uh, uh, uh that the CFL kind of runs. It allowed me to experience that more than college football did, more than the NFL did. So I remember that being like a pivotal moment for me, thinking like, oh, there's a life outside of this um, that I, I, I missed, right? Um, and, and you know, that just kind of took it form of its own. And, of course, you know, I played three years up in Canada and, and things just didn't work out the way I wanted them to work out. I wanted to get seven in. That was my goal. I was my goal was to get seven professionally. I got to five. Life just kind of happened. Um, and man, it's it's like here we are, bro. Yeah, here we are. So did you officially like retire? Yeah. I mean, I knew Good I was I knew I was going to after that that eleventh year. I okay. I, I okay. almost yeah. did almost did ten after ten. Yeah. But they were like, come back. Like the Giants were like, come back. We have a spot for you. Um, like sign right now like yeah. this is right after the season i was like all right let me just sign it and then i'll think about it right like sign the futures deal and then, yeah. then think about it and then i ended up going back and it was like covid year so it was like i didn't have to go back for otas right. like we went back for like three weeks of ota pain? yeah oh shit we were going back for like three weeks of otas <laughs> and then go back to, then we went back for training camp and it was just like I mean, a little bit of struggle at that training camp but yeah. i mean it is what it, it is what it is right. that's what that's what like me and him me and him were kind of going through that now you know like because we're fresh at like i i played last year like but like i said i was kind of oh you played last year yeah Are last you done? year was my first year in mexico yeah 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 you're yeah. done now i'm done now like retired I'm done now Re yep yep fully oh you retired. fresh yeah fresh. i mean i was so in, that's what i was saying. in 21 camp yes so we're fresh so, yeah, I'm, like uh, so that's last why, year was my oh. first full year out wow yeah. yeah so that's how this this whole podcast came about i actually started this in 2020 on my own went because i didn't play i didn't play that season I, that was gonna be my second year in mexico and we were you know going through that period where are we gonna play yeah we're gonna play the season's gonna start in may and this and this so we're getting ready staying ready and as time went on you kind of realize that our chances of playing are getting slimmer and slimmer right. so i'm trying to figure out what i'm gonna do you know post career because i'm like you know baseball is this you know mexico i I can make some decent money, but I'm not making enough money to where I can just, you know, buy a couple rental properties and chill. You know what I mean? I so, do. so I had to start planning that. So that's how this podcast came about. And I would just get, uh, the best guys that I could over zoom 
and you know to have them talk about their journey you know stuff that they didn't stuff that people don't hear nobody hears any of this and nobody hears the struggles that athletes have to go through after the season and it doesn't matter so minor league baseball player you two you know nfl uh players but everybody goes through that struggle off of the field whether it's during a season or you know transitioning into your into your retirement life you can have 20 million dollars in the bank you're gonna have an issue not going to the field and how you were talking about being at uh you know thanksgiving that's been all year for me from april all the way until now and it's it's been a weird feeling covid i was i got to be her 2020 i got to be home but it was weird because you couldn't do normal stuff you right. couldn't live a normal life yeah, so no. this was the first summer that i've had to live a normal life and it's weird me and my wife would talk about it all the time that i just i feel weird and and you kind of struggle transitioning into life afterwards you know kind of trying to find yourself you use that work ethic and the confidence that you got from being an athlete but at the same time you have you have a conflict kind of holding you back void somehow the void that's like yeah and it's and it's hard to figure out and you just have to get through it right we just use the skills that we learn from athletes it doesn't matter you know figure it out like we 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 will figure it out but there's stuff that happens that you don't realize that you're used to being a certain way until you look back and kind of think about it. It's like, man, like I'm so used to everything being done for me. Mm. I'm so used to somebody, you know, packing my bag. I'm used to somebody booking my flights. I'm used to somebody always telling me what to do. Now I'm on my own, you know, real estate doing this where I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. I got to make a schedule. I got to make sure I'm at this spot. I got to make sure I book this. I do this podcast. I have this, you know, Izzy has whatever he needs. And sometimes I can get a little bit overwhelmed. I'm like, why am I being such a bitch? You know, honestly, because <laughs> it's like, just do your job type yeah. of a thing. And then I'm sitting back. So I'm so used to it, being told what to do. And then I got to flip it. And it's it's just kind of like a weird transition. You know, like him and I talk about it all the time because we're with each other a lot. But that is kind of like the whole point of of this. So when he was done and when I was done, I was like, dude, let's like bring it back. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I was Whoa. trying to hold that shit in. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to hold it in. I was trying. <laughs> I was violent. I was trying. Yeah. But yeah, that's how it came it came about. So when you were talking about that, I was like, this is this is perfect because yeah. people see you, you know, on the TV, living yeah. life and stuff, but we're it's just normal average guys. Like some dudes make a lot more money. They might be a lot different. You know, I'm sure that you played with guys that they are different. Like those guys are up on that level. They were meant to be that guy. Yep. But most dudes are just average guys. They're just really, really fast. They're just really big and strong. They could throw a baseball, you know, decently hard. Like this, we're, but we're all the same. And so, man, shameless plug here, man. So I, I started a podcast not too long ago. It's called the Transition Podcast. Talking That's it, off the field. Yeah. Because when I hear you, and I didn't know y'all were so fresh. Yeah. He is. I well, mean, but oh, you're it, pod, yeah, not I, fresh I'm in fresh podcast. after sports. I, no, I'm but, talking yeah. about just after sports, like oh, life yeah. after sports. Yeah. I didn't know y'all were. I, I got done in 2017. So I've been on this journey for a little while. Yes, yeah, so you can help us out. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I th you, you hit the nail on the head, though. It's like you got to go through it. And, man, when I say the reason why I jumped, and started this, you know, started what I was doing with the pod and start having conversations because nobody prepares you for this. And they can't either. And I, I mean, I, I, I kind of beg to differ. Mm. I kind of beg to differ. I think you still have to go through the process, but being having tools. No, I'll say this. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks Everybody, about there's it. There's like always a little bit of like, Oh, you should really like think about it life after football, but while you're in football, you can't. Nobody they they can't. Exactly. You have to be fully invested. Like if you have one foot in in the league and one foot out, you're out. You're already out. You're already out. You're making your you exit. have to be fully invested in your sport in whatever you're doing cuz that's the highest of the high. Mm -hmm. And you can't you can't think about anything after. Yeah. Cuz if you start doing that, then your play is going to suffer. Correct. To that's your point, of nobody can prepare you for that. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, there. that's yeah. that's what I heard. That. And here's the thing too: is like whenever you're done, people still associate you with that. So, oh, you know, Kenny Wiggins played in the NFL. You know, this like 
whenever you venture off into something else, you have to now get those people to understand that you're in this spot because people are still going to recognize you as the baseball player, as the athlete. So that transition can be tough too because everybody has been seeing you for one thing for so long. I think I think one of the hardest things for me because that can also be a, a positive tool to be to leverage, right? Mm. Oh, hundred percent. That yeah. can also be a positive tool to leverage. I think the hardest thing for me was seeing myself outside of that helmet, right? Like we lived and operated on such in such a high level for so long, for so long, right? And then all of a sudden, it's done. Mm -hmm. Right. Like there was no. And again, everybody's departure from professional sports is different. Right. And so for me, I didn't exit the way that I, quote unquote, wanted to exit. Right. It just kind of happened. And the toughest thing for me or one of the toughest things for me early on, I, I, I retired in 2017. I could not even verbally say I'm done playing football. It took me a year. Dang. It took me a year to be able to verbally communicate that, right? Like that's how either how how much I was in denial, how hard it was, mm -hmm. like the whole nine, right? Like going through this whole grieving process. I didn't even want to believe I was done because again, right? Like that's who I was. That's how I saw myself. But the reality of it was like you're not playing anymore, mm -hmm. right? So one of the so I say all that to say one of the biggest challenges and for anybody who will listen to this um, for me was having to kind of readjust my expectation or like the reality of myself. Right. I had this picture of everyone else's expectation of me. Dude. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, yes. Like, oh, you see me as this top one percent. Right. So now and you I, like it, though, a little bit. I do you like that. People see Loved you it. as the Love professional it. athlete. A hundred percent. Love it. But the reality was the reality. Once I got done, the reality was I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, yep. who the fuck I am and how do I continue to live up to this one percent expectation that I think that you all have of me. Right. Am I supposed to jump out of the league and become a CEO right now? Am I supposed to jump out of the league and just have it all together, right? I'm mean, have these because everybody thinks because you play in the NFL, you made a two billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, oh, you just y'all wouldn't even know me you, if I had two billion. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So it was like the hardest thing was like, all right, having to really deconstruct or be even be aware of like, oh, I have this 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 thought of everybody else has this expectation of me. So how do I live up to this false narrative that I'm putting on myself, yep. right? That I'm thinking everybody else is putting on me, right? And the reality was like, I needed time to like say, damn, I'm fucked up. I don't know what I'm doing, who I am, what I want to do. I'm scared to do this. I'm afraid to do that. I don't really believe I have the skills to do X, Y, and Z. How do I, like somebody help me navigate this. Like I'm really pushing the restart button. You know what I mean? Into the real world where sports was like very narrow minded. Now we have the ability to do anything and everything we want to possibly do. Like you, you can choose whatever you want to do now. Like you have a variety of options you want to do. If you want to go to Spain to do fucking welding, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my point. Yeah. That's my point. Right. Like you now have to figure out your lane outside of sport and that was that was the journey man that was that was part of the journey so i've been retired about six years now man and um it's a process man here's the thing too is like you know how you were saying being afraid to do stuff that's what's hard to deal with it's like we were never afraid to do anything Nothing. like me i like i hopped on a plane went to a foreign country didn't didn't speak the language did it and i was just like let's go and but but now at the same time i've used those skills to where now like i feel like i'm not afraid of anything right like i can handle anything but then at the same time you psych yourself out for some reason and you don't know why and you've never had this feeling before and then you're like what is this feeling first of all and then how do i deal with it because 
uh, it's just like a weird thing that you've never had to deal before, and it and it comes quick and then it leaves. Yep. So like I think that we have the ability to get it out of our our minds quick, but it comes and then you're like, what is this? Yep. How do I deal with this? I've never had this feeling before. Correct. And then and then it goes away and then you okay you know I'm back I got it Correct. I got it but it, it it is something that I think yeah I don't know like I, I I do agree but then I don't know how how you can uh, prepare for it afterwards because everybody's different everybody's situation's different yeah um so the hardest part for me has been coming to the realization that there's not going to be another football. Mm. Oh, that's true, right? bro. Like that is true. anything that I put my teeth into, anything I dive into, there's not going to be another football. Yeah. I'm not going to get that feeling of running out onto the field, strapping up, like putting my pads on, hitting somebody, like playing on Thanksgiving and and like in front of millions and millions of people. Bro. You're I'm never going to find that feeling again. Like and like I haven't I I don't know how to like I wouldn't say cope with it, but like, I don't know how to deal with that. You know, like the goal is to always find that feeling, right? It's like, it's like a crackhead. Like you're always chasing that, that high, right? They call us adrenaline junkies. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what it is too. Right. But like, I don't think I would ever get that. I don't think I, I can't think of anything yeah. that would ever give me that feeling again. Right. Yeah. Because I, I, I like the competitiveness, like I can be competitive in different things. Right. But it's also like, imposing my physical will on Correct. somebody as well, which is a completely different thing in the real world. You can't do that out in the real world. Like I play basketball and every once in a while and like I do that, but it's not the same, man. It's not putting my hands on somebody and like taking somebody who is a 300 pound man who is the best at his job and putting him on his ass. Yeah. You know, like yeah. there's no other, and that's feeling, exciting. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's I'm getting exciting. juice right now. Yeah, like talking about exciting. it, but like, there yeah. will never be that feeling again of like, yeah. all right, like I worked since I was 13 years old till for this Sunday. Yeah. Like, right. Like everything that I've done for the last 20 years of my life, it has all come down to this moment right here. And I have to go out there and show out and, and put on for my family and put on for my hometown and, and show everybody what I, I've been doing my, my whole entire life. There's not, there's nothing going to be even come close to that. Yeah. And like, I have to come with the, to the realization that I'm never going to find that again. Yeah. And it's crazy that we're 30, 34 years old and I have to live the rest of my life trying to find trying that. Trying to find it. And you can't. Man, listen, I spent I spent the first couple of my couple years first couple years of my retirement like in that. Yep. Like some people and let's just be honest, right? Like some people's transitions are very smooth, some people's transitions are longer than the others, some people transition shorter, some people even get lost in transition. Yep. You know what I mean? Like let's just be honest, right? I know I spent the first couple of years of my of my transition, my retirement, like like seeking that. And there's a lot of things that you know, I was even afraid to talk about because, I mean, you think about it, right? Like they say that as as football players and as athletes, like spe- specifically football players, like we'd get in car crashes every day. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when we were in Cincinnati, I don't know if you remember this, man, but one of the things that I enjoy doing is I always needed that first hit, yep. like that first hit contact before I got on the field. And Kenny was a guy for me that before, you know, before the game, man, I'm like, hey, I need you to just hit me. You know what I mean? So we <laughs> just sidelines. we just run up, <laughs> yeah. we just run up to each other. You know what I mean? Just like, him head, quick, just yeah. bop, bop, bop. You know what I mean? Just that's that would wake me up. That'd get me. And I I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Like I enjoyed that, right? Like that got me fired up. That me that got me going. I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it. I'm like, hey, you was talking. I was like, hey, we can line it up right now. Um, um, but like I, there were there were moments in my transition, bro, where like, like I needed to seek help because, like, I was going through that. I hate to say it like this, but the truth is, like, I was going through like those withdrawals. You know what I mean? Like I need to feel something because you go from that to working at a desk, and that's the only job in the world that you can hit somebody before you go to work and right? just like, and 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 be excited about it. Like, oh, this is your job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is yeah. what we pay you to do. Yeah. Right. 
And so being able to go from that to this is just two totally different worlds. You know what I mean? And so to your point, like, man, I, I went out and bought a damn motorcycle. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't even skydiving. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm I, need, I need, I need. Searching. I'm, I, you know, and, and I remember going, you know, having a few therapy sessions and, you know, the therapist was like, as, as former professional football players, like you all are adrenaline junkies. Like, this is what you do. Like you've. Nobody really knows what it feels like to go out and do this day in and day out and play in front of millions week in and week out for years. Like, that's just a different caliber of person. You know what I mean? Like, it's just different. And um, and so that 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 has been my experience. One thing that I found now, another shameless plug, I started running. And it sucks. (laughs) (laughs) And it sucks. But it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I don't like this. But it's challenging me. Mm. You should come play basketball with me. Mentally. It's challenging me mentally. Because it's you by yourself out there, step after step. It's just me. It's just me. Somebody was like, the other day, like, do you like running? How do you compare this to football? And I'm like, no, I don't like running. Mm. But that's the beauty of it. Is because at the end of the day, it's 1v1. Mm-hmm. It's me versus you. It's me versus me, right? Like, I have to make a decision every day to get up and go put these miles in, right? And it sucks. But it's the challenge, even, and there's a physical challenge to that yeah, as yeah. well that you alluded to that we have to have um, that that gives me something to go after. So this weekend, I'll actually be running the full two cities marathon 26.2 miles oh let's go let's go mayweather's gonna have a booth out there so come let's see go. us after yeah uh, we'll, we'll be I out there need, i might need a massage I'll, g- need... I'll give you a massage that's good <laughs> hey are we uh you said five minutes left on the camera or five minutes left on the pod okay so we can go a little bit after this okay so we'll end it when we end it and then we'll do that all right so, um but yeah uh speaking to your point uh about running Goggins, I'm sure you know David Goggins. Yep. You know, hardest man on the planet. Um, for, and I don't think people will realize how funny he is. Like, he does all that, you know, badass stuff, but dude loves sports, likes to have a good time. Very few people see, like, the real Goggins. Or, or David, I should say, mm-hmm. because he's David, but then he's Goggins, mm-hmm. right? And he would talk about running and how it's the most, um, one of the most mentally tough things that he does and that's why he does it Mm -hmm. he says he hates running bro and that's why he does it and one of my favorite videos if you go on 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 his instagram you probably got to scroll back probably like two years and he's running you know all of his videos it shows him running and he goes to the video goes so i've been grinding lately you know putting in miles and I've been sitting on the couch 30 minutes just staring at my shoes before i put the motherfuckers on (laughs) you know he goes and he goes just just sitting there so I decided. So I decided to tape record myself, and when I listened back to it, sound like a straight bitch when I listened <laughs> to that. Mother- <laughs> and he goes, Bad. and he goes, and he goes. So when you're going through a hard time, tape rec- tape record yourself and listen to what kind of bitch you're being. I know it sounds like it's like funny when we talk about it, but when you actually do it, Play or you're it. actually thinking about what you're doing. When you're in that kind of, you know, bitch moment, you're like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. When you look back at that moment, you're going to laugh and be like, why was I so scared? Yep. And again, to your point, it's you versus you. Every day. So the running, who's going to tell you to stop? You. That's you. only me. Yep. Like, yep. W- when you do anything, who's going to tell you to it's stop? Only you. And it's, and it's, and it's a great point that you made that that's how life is. Bro. Right? Like, you are your own worst critic you're your biggest competition you're the one that's going to push you you're also you're also the one that's going to tell yourself that you can't do it right Correct. everybody says don't let other people tell you that you can't do it right these are narps non-athletes always say don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something no don't let yourself tell you that you can't do For something sure. because that's what's going to stop you because what happens is somebody's going to tell you that you can't do it and you're going to believe it and then tell yourself that you can't do Correct. it Correct didn't have anything to do with anybody else doing it and it, that's just like a point that not very many people understand and they think that some their circumstance is what's holding him back no just like not. just like hitting a home run out of chuck chancy 
Wow. Who, it's just like hitting a home run out of Chelsea. Right, who hit a home run out of Chelsea? We're some fun stuff now. We've been, <laughs> Me, we've, been, we've been a little bit too serious right now. He pitched it. This man right here. Okay. I got the video if you want to see it. Backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. I do want to see it. Sure yeah, yeah, backtrack. Sure, yeah. So, this is both. You got to like put the clip on there now. Yeah, no. We'll, uh, we'll show you. <laughs> we'll show you. He got it. He's like, he ah. got it. We got you. <laughs> so, so, this is like. You know, off the field, talking about off the field, both, you know, entertaining, inspirational, but at the same time, like, having fun, right? Us getting to do things that we haven't got to do when you play, when you're playing sports. Like, uh-huh. You don't, you don't get to snowboard, you don't get to ride motorcycles, right. all that stuff. So, also getting to do all those fun things. Yeah. So, oh, right. Correct. Um, you know, one of them's boxing, you're like at the gym, um, we're going to do some like fun things that we've that we've never gotten to do both for entertainment but like both for ourselves so one of them is he's always thought that uh you know he's the best baseball player in the world <laughs> I right said that so i think you did so the no, bet was uh that. can he hit one out at chuck chancy park where the grizzlies play and so we you know put it to the test and we went out there and took you know got to take batting practice and everybody doubted this man everybody doubted this man that like he couldn't do it uh i kind of did too i mean Let's like, be honest. Of course. Yeah, it's not an easy um, task. But, like, I want him to do it. I kind of yeah. need him to do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, we were out there, and we put this poll, you know, ask all these people. Everybody was saying, no, like, you can't do it. Just just being honest. Like, yeah. some people were like, yeah, you can do it, Kenny. But then at the same time, like, I don't really yeah. think he can't. So, he, so, so, this man goes out there and hits two. Jeez. Two homers <laughs> over the fence, and he was, you would have thought this dude just won a Super Bowl. I believe I'm it. Telling Juice, you. I'm telling you. Juice, bro. Juice. Competitor. Kenny is a uh, listen. I will I will give flowers where they're due. Kenny is a Kenny is a good athlete. He is. Yeah. Kenny is a good athlete, and he's huge. He's six seven, two hundred eighty pounds. He, For he a hit big, lanky, white guy. I had to throw the color in there. I huh? did. I've, that's fine. We always yeah, that's the fine. white guy. Dude is an athlete, man. I've seen him swing a golf club. He's talked stuff about me all the time, about my non-athletic abilities. But I've seen this dude in action on the court. I've seen him on the field. Like, so that doesn't surprise me, man. Like, dude is dude is raw. Dude is raw. Damn. Dude is raw. He's proud of that. I'll too. give you that. I've never said that I like out loud. That. Hey, clip that. <laughs> I never said that out loud. Yeah. But I get flowers where they do, man. Hell yeah. My boy is yeah. raw. My, my guy is raw. That's How it. fast was the pitch? Oh, it was just, you like just throwing BP. Just, just like, yeah, just like get there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was feeding him. I yeah, was grooving him. Yeah. If you were to pitch to me it. like live, I'm not touching. Yeah, no, for I'm, sure. He's but a professional. like, I've 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 played an, enough baseball where I I had I had the skill. Yeah. Right? So all I had to do was is find it deep in the body and then yeah. just put one out. Yeah. So the bet was he could do it with a metal bat. Okay. And he did it with both metal and, and wood. wood so he hit Ooh. one with metal, one with wood. So. You had to so set I, up I probably would say like 25 pitches for the metal and then like 10, 15 for the wood. I would uh, after the first initial 10 that you got. Yeah, I would say it was yeah. probably like So it's that harder afterwards. to hit it with the wooden bat. It's harder to hit a home run with the, a wooden bat. The, the, sweet sm- the sweet spot on the wood bat is smaller, but there's more pop. Okay, that makes sense. Nobody uses a metal bat in the league. Well, college, no, college uses metal college bat. in the league. I mean, in the league, is everything's wood. Yeah. Everything's wood. Right. But if you take a big league bat against the metal bats that they use nowadays, uh-huh. I would say that good wood has more pop, maybe just a tiny bit, yeah, but you got to square it up. Yeah, yep. yeah. You know, metal bat, Sheesh. you can hit it all over the place. And, nice, and and still get it. There you go. Yeah, got it out. Bro. Hats off, my boy. Hey, oh, put that thing back on. <laughs> Y'all yeah. didn't know. Might need to, <laughs> might need to buff, buffer know. that. Put some turtle wax on that. Y'all thing. didn't even know. <laughs> oh, that's. Is it thanks are running? Probably. You never know. You never know. You never know. But they can hear you. Okay, they can good. Hear you for sure. Okay. Um, one of the big things that I remember about you working out at um athletic performance because that's kind of where we all met working out. You and Rob used to just go at it out of Fresno State. That's that was like one of my favorite moments. You you guys just go about at two it, guys that could just talk. Oh, that was my favorite time. And I'm sitting there like a baseball player, scared to scared to shit. Like these two brothers just going at it. They talking mad shit. And I'm just over there, just like <sighs> you guys, you guys, you guys got how many more we got? <laughs> that was oh the thing that like gosh. kind of it kind of made me realize that you can 
You can have fun. You can be yourself. You can take your craft very, very serious and work your ass off all at the same time. Yeah. Because him and Rob would be chirping. They'd be talking about girls or partying or, you know, who's better or who's faster. Always. While they're getting their work in. While they're taking their craft very, very seriously. So So that's what I learned from, from you is you took your craft very seriously, which is weird because... You know, just as you come in here, very funny, a lot of jokes, talking smack on Kenny. Kenny's talking smack on you, but you worked hard and you took your craft very serious. So you can, sure. you don't have to be a hard nose, work all day, grind, grind, grind. You can enjoy it a little bit more, and that's what I learned from you. And that's the difference between that. the one percenters, for sure. That's what it is. I, I appreciate that, man. That's that's something that's man, that's dope. That's dope because you never know who's watching, right? And uh, I mean, my hats off to Rob. hats off to Rob Go to you know, um, similarly like with Kenny man, me and this dude go. We just do this to your point. Like iron is sharper than iron, right? Whatever we did, it was always to get better, right? Like how do we continue to make each other better? But like to your point, in the midst of it, it was like I'm better than you though. You know what I mean? Like even if you are better than me, I'm still going to let you know that I'm better than you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it and it's I don't health, know, healthy man. competition. It's healthy, man. And it's, healthy it's competition. something that I think everybody a lot of people don't have, but when you find the folks that you can do that with, cuz at the end of the day, it's love. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you want to be able to and that's sometimes when things are so mundane and so routine, yeah. like you need that you little need it. Yeah. extra you need energy. It. You know what I mean? You need that little extra spark. Absolutely. I'll be your spark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have some fun. Call me off guard with that one. <laughs> hey, this dude sneaky, watch out for him. Oh, he sneaky? knows. Sneaky, sneaky, watch you out for him. Sneaky. What do you want, bro? Oh, oh okay. Here we go. All right, okay. Hold on. Let me get my. All right, let all right. Let's have now. some fun. You, 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 you gotta get your mind right right now. Yeah, yeah. So all this right, is on. so this is how we do it. Can I go live on Instagram? Sure, yeah, you do whatever yeah. you want. Do you want him to hold it for you? Uh, yep. All right, hold on. All right, so this is we've done this. How many guests have we done this with? Can this now the the fourth, third, third? I'm only gonna have like. Do we do this with, is the uh, three people on live? Doctor B, Greg, Mark. So uh, fourth. So you're yeah. number four. You're our ninth guest. Oh, that's what's the up. new and improved. Uh, we've had Jose Ramirez, Quincy Pondexter, Tony Kemp. Oh, y'all had some B- oh, we got some hitters. Isaiah yeah, Green in this. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Our conversation today is probably one of the better ones. I, I think, yeah, dude, I think this people is, this are going to enjoy one, bro. this. Thanks. This is uh, a good Very, one. very good. But we're going to have some fun now. So how this works I'm is great. you have one minute. You have one minute. Are you all straight on there or no? No, nah, you see me fumbling. First time using a phone. You should have just handed it to him. He would have been able to. He would have oh, been able I to. I want him to see them. All right, so how this fix? works. <laughs> <laughs> how this works is. Ten questions. I got yours on my phone. <laughs> Ten questions. You have one minute. Ten. Qu- Damn. Okay. Ten questions. You have one minute. Very, very easy to answer. Uh, but the little caveat or the little twist here is he's gonna judge you based on your scores, how quick you answered, how scores. funny the answers were with the funny questions, how serious and good the answers were with the serious questions, and then he's gonna rate you zero. Through ten, okay. That's a lot of. I mean, he's kind of biased though. All right, whatever. No, this he's is not. All about he's it. Very, this, very. On, he's this is all. It's a, all right. How much? I got one minute judge. to answer ten questions. Yep. One minute to answer ten questions. You go over. You're going to get points knocked Deducted. off. Deducted. All right. Okay. Run it. Run it. Run it. Run it. All right. Run you it. ready? I'm ready. Let's lock it in. In lock three, in. two, one. Other than football, what is your favorite sport? Track. If you could eat only one thing all day, every day, what would it Fries. be? Fries. Most famous contact in your phone? Antonio Brown. If you were a potato, how would you want to be cooked? Fry me. (laughs) Three things you're bringing with you on a deserted island. My girl, some food, and a cell phone just in case I need to call my chopper. Team you hate the most in all of sports? Clippers. Favorite non-sports movie? Gladiator. Dinner with any sports star, dead or alive. Who is it with and what are you eating? I'm going with Jordan. I'm getting a steak. Medium. If, if you were a stripper, what would your stripper name be? Golden Boy. <laughs> Hollywood. Taylor Swift or Michael Jackson? Hollywood. Hold on. Taylor Swift? M- Michael Jackson. 
Wait, to do what? Just this or kinda, that? Taylor Swift and Michael Jackson. Jackson okay, of, there we go. That's Hollywood. it. Time. How do you do on a time? Hollywood. He was good on a time, huh? Oh. No, we'll go. I, 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 I'll go four because the start in that. So. Oh, that was tough. Let me tell you, I'm going to come in right now. Damn. I thought that was really good. Really good. I loved it. Really good. I loved it. I liked Thank it. You. But I'm not the judge. Ah, this man's the judge, and he's pretty, He's a pretty tough judge. He's a pretty tough judge. So it goes decimal points, right? Uh, tens being the highest, but there's never gonna be any. There's never gonna be a ten, right? Okay. Um, we have a eight point four on the board. Who has eight point four? Doctor B. A doctor. A doctor. So. Ah. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, and then we have uh, Greg Pinelli. Okay, you, you know Greg. I th- he overscored him. I think he gave him like a five or something. Should have been like a three. It's, but it's okay. I, but that's okay. And then we had uh, a baseball player, Marcus Walden, World Series champ. He did very good. What did he say? Wait, eight point two? I think he yeah, was something like that. I think so. It was eight point. So we have really, really good, and then we have really, 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 really bad. bad. So uh, let's see what the judge has this, to say. Kenny so, Wiggins. What do you got? Go oh, ahead, man, you know, tough. critique. I'm so Give I'm going through some of his some of his answers in my head. Gladiator, good choice. Great choice. Great choice. Um I like the stripper name. You like that? Yeah. Wait, oh, but what is it? Is it Golden Boy Hollywood? It's or is Golden it? Boy Hollywood. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> you had the fact to, that I had to add that the, on the, the end. The fact like, that he was so confident with it was like that? my yeah, like yeah. that's that's a that's a bump. And it was Thank quick. That I was said, a bump. Well, sure. Golden boy. I've been thinking about this since I was five. <laughs> like, wait, Hollywood, you gotta throw that on there. Jordan with the steak. That that's probably Sneaky, my- all four that we've played this with, it's been steak. Yep. That answer. I mean it's, But you it's said a- medium, so that knocked you down a little bit. If you would have just said Jordan with a steak, I would have oh, bumped you up, but you said medium. I had like, to add steak? the extra shit. What steak? What steak? What cut? I'm not even going to say now. Mm, make him nervous. If you, I, it, okay. Yeah, steak. don't, 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 steak. don't. Yeah, there no, you go. No, yeah, don't good, call, good, call, go good call. Good call. Okay. Steak. Come on, Wiggins. All right. You know what? The Jordan one might have pushed you over. I might go 8-5. Oh, we got a new leader in the clubhouse. 8-5. Let's five. go. We got a new leader in the yep. clubhouse. Let's go. Isaiah Green eight takes five. the lead Let's in the clubhouse. Eight that five. might stay around for a while because yep. I got to tell you, that it was a good one. It was good, though. It was good. The stripper one, you hit it quick. Because <laughs> usually people would be like, Ugh. You went Golden Boy, and he hit Hollywood, it, and he hit it quick, <laughs> and he hit it quick with the potato. Oh, but f- fry me up! I was ready. Yeah, I was yeah, ready before yeah. you even answered that right. question to ask it. I was like, that yeah. was good, Isaiah. We appreciate you coming off oh, both man. motivational, inspirational, funny. You are the man. I miss you, man. I don't get to see you as appreciate much as uh, we do, but I think after this podcast, we'll st- we'll probably hang out a lot more because uh, so I like this crew. Um, Absolutely. make sure you give this man a follow. What's your Instagram? What, what do you got? Uh, man, on? at stand up guy underscore IG, your boy. That's him. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, all those good things on Spotify. Make sure you uh, hit that five star, follow us also, um, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. And uh, we will bring you the best guests and the best content that we possibly can. We appreciate you listening. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.